Lisa has done quite a few of our sessions. She started talking about uh, viewing sessions with us. I think it was in, it was earlier this year, but I think it was like March, if I'm remembering that right. I love the kind of the gap strategy that she employs. You're going to like it too. Uh, Melissa, let's go ahead and bring you on here. How are you doing? Great. Can you hear me, Jeff? Yes. Great. I know you had sent me a message saying that uh, <laughs> you're worried about your audio. It's coming through great. Wonderful. So. Great. And um, let me know how to share my screen here. Yeah, I've just sent you the controls. So it should just say, hey, do you want to share your screen? And you just say yes. That's it. You got it. Okay, great. Thanks so much for having me today. Beautiful day here in New York City. 70 some degrees, which is unusual, considering we're about three weeks away from Thanksgiving. Uh, but it's nice to be here with you today. And obviously, this is an exciting week. It's good to have you. And I will, uh, I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about gaps and specifically trading the side of institutional money and gaps. And as I was saying, this is an exciting week. Why? It's an election week for the midterms here in the United States. For those of you that are U.S. citizens, we have elections tomorrow. So everyone is wondering what's going to happen tomorrow or really Wednesday when we see the outcome of the midterm election. So will the market react? Will it not react? Will it react positive? Will it react negative? We obviously saw the big sell-off, or you saw if you watched the market last week, or after the Fed announcement about the rate hike. And it really wasn't even the rate hike per se, because the Fed said they were going to raise rates 75 basis points last week. It wasn't so much that that the market reacted negatively to. It was the fact that the Fed said that they are going to stay the course. So the course that they've been on all of 2022 is that they've been raising rates. And actually, they've been raising rates quite fast. Uh, some of you uh, may have been around long enough to remember when mortgage rates were 7% or even higher. And that's really where we are right now. And by the end of the calendar year, mortgage rates could even be 8%. And so the market is reacting negatively to that. And Apple was down today. We actually traded Apple today as a play of the day. And one of the reasons Apple was down today was because there's more lockdowns going on in China. COVID lockdowns in China, and obviously people are worried about a slowdown in production, and people are worried about layoffs if companies start to lay people off and how that could affect the economy. Everyone knows already we're in a period of inflation. So all of these things are great things to talk about. I talk about them when I appear on television, but actually what I look at on a given day, any single given day is the price side of things, the charts like Jeff was talking about. I really just make decisions based on price, but it's not just based on price, it's based on the price of the gap. All of the events that I just discussed with you though, affect or create gaps and make people buy or sell stocks or the market, the overall market, and then that creates momentum and movement. And obviously that's what we wanna play on as actual day traders. If you have questions as we go along today, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have questions, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. I do appear on national television. When I'm on TV, I try to put my uh, hits and when I'm going to be on, so you can watch me on Twitter or Facebook. And again, this has been a very interesting year to discuss markets. So 2022, it's been a great year to trade if you've been on the right side of things. If you've been on the wrong side of things, you've had a terrible year. So there probably is people here uh, split in half the camp, is my guess. When the year started out, we were bullish, okay? We had a very bullish year in 2021, and then we started to fall off earlier in the year. And really, people continued to buy the dip at the beginning of the year, which they did in 2021, and that did not work this year. Now, I don't buy the dip. I've never done that. It does not consistently work to make money in the market. So the one thing is, if you want to make money in the market, you have to be able to consistently apply a set strategy that you can use in any market conditions that works all the time, or as many times as a setup occurs with a certain degree of, uh, or a certain degree of profitability, okay? It doesn't mean that sometimes buying the dip doesn't work. It did work in 2021. It actually worked the whole year of 2021 in the overall market. And I mean the QQQs of the spy. But it's not working this year, okay? So again, the consistency is what is important if you're trading 
Everyone has some losers, but the idea is to have more winners than losers. And if you've been buying the dip all year, you've just flat out, full on, nonstop been losing because it's just not working, okay? And again, we're getting into the end of 2022 and 2023 has, has a lot to come and in store as well. I put the stats for the whole year. These are the day trade stats. These are not options. I will talk about a couple options trades in here today for the entire year of 2022. It has been a great year. I'm mostly short. We are gonna talk about shorting today. That's what I like to do. $605,054, this is year to date, through today, actually. We did Apple today, I'm gonna go over that trade, with an average risk of $2,800 per position. That is per risk per trade. These are positions on margin, okay? So you would have to have a margin account to take these positions. And again, these were all gap trades. Some were longs, but most of these trades were shorts, okay? Which is what we're gonna talk about today. So if you're here and you've been thinking about doing this, whether you wanna do it part-time or for extra money or whether you wanna do it full-time, I think at the end of the year is a good time to take stock for what you've accomplished this year, how much money you've made with your trading or whether you've been considering trading all year but have been able to pull the plug that you wanna start to go into 2023 with some kind of goal setting for yourself. Where do you want to be 12 months from now? You, it, you know, maybe you're happy. Maybe you've had a great year, you know, for 2022. Maybe you want to do better, okay? This is the time to do it. You know, people do uh, New Year's resolutions. I think it's a good idea with trading to have a plan, a plan of action. A lot of people work hard trying to be, become successful traders, and they just never get there. And actually, a lot of people work hard in general at their jobs, and they never get anywhere. It takes more than hard work actually to get ahead. It takes having the ability to see into the future and believe in yourself and actually believe that you can make something of your life, that you can change your life, and part of that has to do with taking risk. Because if you're not willing to take risk, then trading is not for you. You must take risk in order to make money in the market. And if you're not happy with your current job, if the, with the current income level that you're at, you have to be willing to take risks to make changes to get to the next place. And even though that may be scary, there's no other way to change the circumstances that you're in other than to take risks. It's not about risk for risk's sake. This isn't about not thinking it through. You can think things through, but a lot of people I think don't understand that you do have to take risks to better your life. And a lot of people just waste time really getting nowhere. Meanwhile, years and years of their life are going by. So I think it's important for people to understand that one individual can trade the market successfully as a career. You can do it. You can do it. You need a dependable method, okay? And in order to read the rewards the market has to offer you, you really need a quality system. I found a lot of people, and I talk about this, I've been teaching people with the stock swoosh for 10 years now. I started my business in 2012. A lot of people trade, and they're trading basically blind. They're trading blind. They don't have a set system, they don't have a strategy. Some people don't even use charts to trade, okay? They're trading based on a gut or a feeling, all right? The central structure to trading results has to be the strategy and a solid foundation that's based on accurately reading price action and advanced technical analysis. Now, earlier I was talking about the Fed. Last week, people were buying, buying into the Fed announcement. That was a crazy thing to do. Why did they do that? They thought the Fed was gonna say they were gonna back off raising rates, but they didn't. And it was crazy that anyone went long into that, but people were going long since October 13th, actually in the market, and specifically the Friday before the Fed announcement. You have to look at price, because price will tell you actually what's happening right now. And it's you're making the prediction whether the price is gonna go up or down to go long or short, okay? but you have to have a reason for doing that, something that you're looking for. And again, that's the strategy part of it. So go into the end of 2022 with a positive and optimistic attitude about your financial goals for 2023. Be realistic, but you can set your sights on some pretty good goals 12 months from now. I don't think that's crazy. You can trade the market and you can be successful. I know people get down on themselves, but it's just you don't know what to do if you're not making money. And if you are making money, congrats. You know, it's not impossible to make money trading. And again, I'm talking about consistently. But again, one of the nice things about trading is you could do it from home, you could be anywhere in the world and do it. And it's really full-time pay for part-time hours. Now I trade in the morning, we were done super duper quick in the morning in the trading apple. 
We were in and out in a couple of minutes. It was literally not even a half an hour. We were done. That was it. That was the day. You don't have to sit and train the entire time the market is open. And you also get evenings and weekends off, which is nice too, if you want to do this for a living. But it really is a dream job because the only thing stopping you from making more money is actually the amount of risk per trade that you're putting on in the trade. So I have advanced trader risk, beginner trader risk. We're going to look at some examples today. But the fact is you have to set your risk based on your cash. But as you do well, as you grow your account, you can increase it. Okay, You can increase your risk as you go along. And, and again, that's the positive thing that you have to look at. But again, if you're not making money in the market, you're probably not reading charts, trading blind, like I said, or you don't know how to read a chart. And if you don't know how to read a chart, you really shouldn't be trading at all because this is extremely, extremely important, okay? And Jeff talks about this all the time. We could all pull up Apple, we could all put up the daily chart of Apple right now this second, and we could all get the same exact number, pretty much within a millisecond, all right? It's live electronic data that we're all seeing, and we can't disagree about that. So we see where it's trading, we see the price that it's trading. And we need to be able to make decisions before the move actually happens in the stock to get in the train before it goes there. Again, that's how you're gonna make the money. But for me, it's all about one strategy. For me, my strategy is gaps. You actually, though, don't need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail all the time. So it's really about focusing, for me, on the gap, but it's also focusing on institutional money. So I'm looking to read institutional money in the price patterns and gaps. And I really am telling you, you don't need to do anything else. Because if you see the stock is getting bought with institutional money, you can go long and it's gonna lift it and you can make money going long. Or you can buy a call in an option, for example. If you're shorting a stock, okay, you're shorting it, you could buy a put. If the stock price drops, you'll make money. Or you can short it as a day trade, as, an, a, a, as a day trade where you're taking it on margin Take a thousand shares, short it at 20, get out at 19, you made a buck. So how much would you make? A thousand dollars, okay? That momentum would be what? To the downside. Institutional money, therefore, is selling the stock. It's pushing it down, okay? But all of this, like I said, involves taking risk and nothing great in life comes without taking risk. And as soon as you start to accept that, actually, and almost embrace it, you know, and again, this isn't about taking risk for risk's sake. It's about taking calculated risk. That's what it's about. So think about where you want to be at the end of 2023, 12 months from now. Do you want to be at the same place you're at now or do you want to be somewhere better? I always try to set higher and higher, bigger and bigger goals for myself year over year, whether it's for myself personally, whether it's for you know my trading, my options trading, my day trading. I always want to try to be improving. And I think that that's something that people somewhere along the line, again, miss out on because they feel like they're in constantly in the state of anxiety and struggle with trading in the market. You've got to try to find a way to make trading less stressful for yourself. And one of the ways that I did that is I only trade the morning. I'm quick in and out done in the morning and I'm done. So I don't sit there all day trading, trading, trading. I found doing that you give money back so I just look at trading the first half hour of the day and I'm done. And I have found that is so much easier, okay? It's really about mastering a skill. That skill could be fast trades. It could be shorting, which we're gonna talk about today. It could be predicting the moves of where the market's gonna go next, for example. And it's really anything that you do, could be sports, anything. You wanna master the skill. You master the skill set and you're going to be able to do well and you're going to be able to make money. So part of the thing that I'm looking for, again, because I'm in and out of these trades sometimes in minutes, is I want a big move. Large moves happen in gaps in the first half hour of the day. I happen to call my system called the golden gap because I'm looking for only one a day. And that's all you need is only one. So I call it a golden gap because it's like finding gold in the market because you only need one trade. Again, one trade a day. Also, guess what? It limits your losses. So you will have less losses if you're taking less trades, you see? And you can also then put more size on. So the golden gap is a rating system. We're looking at technical analysis. We're gonna look at charts in a minute. It looks at 26 points of the daily chart of a stock. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. The, po this, the points, the 26 points predict 
where the stock is going to go when it's gapping. So I'm not predicting the gap itself. I allow the gap to happen, and then I'm predicting where the stock is going to go, whether up or down, after I see the gap. It tells me where the money's flowing. The gap tells me that, okay? And why does this matter? Because that's how you're gonna make money to profit. That's how you're gonna make money by knowing what direction. If someone said to you, and again, I'm just going back to, you know, before COVID, that COVID was even gonna happen and the whole country was gonna shut down. You would have shorted, you could have shorted the market. You would have known the market was gonna tank February into March of 2020. So knowing where something's gonna go ahead of time is very valuable information, but you don't have insider information on any stocks or even what the Fed's gonna say either. What you do have though, like I said, is the charts and the live data. But getting back to what I was saying about the beginning part of the day, this is the most important part of the day. In the first 30 minutes of the day, stocks make about 80% of their move in the gap. You play that day, you're in and out and you're done. You can play it as a day trade, you could play it as an option if you want, but typically when I'm doing options, I'm looking for a much, much larger moves, meaning a big move that will go maybe for several consecutive days or a larger move into the close on the, into four o'clock on that day I'm doing it. So the difference between me for doing options and day trades, I'm just looking for bigger targets in the options, okay? And big profits come in money moves. So the faster you can get it, the better it is. And again, it's not about quantity. It's not about doing a million things. It's about doing one thing. And again, that also limits your losses. It is about quality. It is not about quantity. So this is very, very important. So what am I looking for? I'm looking to find stocks to trade that are gapping that have number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, two big moves of the day, Three, early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So again, risk to reward is important. Now, what do I consider a good risk to reward? Risking $1,000 and making 500, risking $1,000 and making 1,000, 50% or 100%. Those are good risk to rewards in my opinion. Now we were just talking about Apple. So let's go over this here. So Apple, we shorted today and what did it do it gap down so let's take a look at it so this was friday november 4th again this is a daily chart so friday we closed here boom gap down here fell got in got out done boom i'm going to show you the one minute in a second entry was 136.80 1800 shares is an advanced trader risk of 3060 exit was 135.68 we had a good exit on this and the profit was $2,016. Now let's look at the one minute chart. Again, we're in and out quick, very, very quick, okay? So this was this morning, this is the one minute, see down here, today is the seventh. We got in, got the drop, got out, done, boom. So see time of the day down in here? We were done by 10 a.m., 10 o'clock. See it? So again, Apple gapped. And actually this was down quite a lot early this morning, it was down even more, okay? So that's it. You go about your day, you do whatever you need to get done. I'm doing a webinar with, with all of you. You don't have to sit all day long. Now, I'm just gonna show you the last week of trains here. Friday, we didn't do any trains, why? Nothing met my criteria. You've got to wait for the trades that are good. Wait for the gaps that are good. Remember, high odds. Got to keep the odds high. So the whole idea of my rating system with the 26 points is I'm looking to find a gap that's going to rate 20 points or more. It doesn't have to have a perfect score. But I'm trying to get as high as a rating as I can. If it rates under 20, I don't do it. So there was a lot of gaps on Friday, but no quality. No quality. Actually, Friday we gapped up, failed, fell, fell in the morning, and then reversed in the afternoon. Friday was a crazy day for the market. It was trying to find itself after the, the FOMC announcement on Wednesday, actually. So again, high odds. Trading is about odds. I put a stop in when I take a trade because I know that I could lose in that trade, okay? So it's about the idea of 
keeping the odds high. You want to have more winners than losers. Now, we did this one here. This was the day before, Thursday the 3rd, we shorted the QQQs. So again, this is a day trade. Entry was 262.20, shares is 1500, risk is 3150, exit is $260.50, profit was $2550. This was on the 3rd, down in here. Right there, snug as a bug. What happened with this? Market closed here, gap down, fell. So again, this was a gap. And I ran it in the morning and said, this gap's going to fall. And it actually did. Okay. So let's look at the one minute. Again, this is, that was, this is a daily chart. Okay. That's where I'm seeing the gap here. There it is. This is the one minute. Again, having charts is so important. It's critical. Because if you don't have charts and you're not looking at charts and you're not reading charts correctly, you're, again, you're trading blind if you're not looking at them at all. And if you don't know how to read them, you're confused. You might even think about going long the QQQs here, here. The play was not a long. The play was a short, okay? So again, it's about getting the fast move as quick as you can get it and getting out as quick as you can get it. So we did this in here. Got the drop. Boom. Done. Again. Boom. Done. 10 a.m., out, first half hour of the day. See it? And again, if anyone has any questions, you can put it in the, in the room there. I think I can see it. Um, let me just scroll down. Can everybody hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Okay, good. Um, okay, so that was a short that we did on thursday in the qqqs so let's go back to this then we had the spy the spy was another short okay this was on wednesday actually here so this was a gap closed here gap down rallied at first first we rallied and then it fell now, again, I did not hold this all day past the announcement, but again, we did this in the morning, got out quick, entry in the short in the SPY, I'll show you the one minute in a minute, this is the daily, 383.50, shares was 1500 risk was $2,700 a train, exit was 382.30, profit $1,800. So again, when you're looking to trade, you have to say, I believe this is going up or I believe this is going down. You can't be wishy-washy about it. If you're wishy-washy back and forth, whether it's a long or a short, it's going to be very difficult for you to make money with any level of conviction. You can't have conviction something's going up and have conviction something's going down at the same time. Okay. Anyways, here was the morning where we did the train, where we shorted this buy and we got the drop and we got out here. But I just want to show you where this went then later in the day. Again, we were well, 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 well out of this. But that was the Fed announcement. Here's where people were buying it. Here's the lift. And then as he was talking, it started to sell off like a hot cake. See it? So again, this may not look like much, but actually it was profit. It was $1,800. So again, you just need just a piece of that move as quick as you can get it right in the morning right in the morning the first 30 minutes of the day that's the whole point so again it's looking for large institutional money that's why i'm trading gaps they work very well and have big moves gaps are created with large institutional money that is what makes the gap the professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. Again, if you have institutional money, by institutional money, I mean what? I mean hedge funds, I mean big banks. They are selling positions and they are buying positions, okay? And actually, they sold Apple today. Apple was down this morning in the pre-market, Apple gap down this morning, okay? So you're looking to trade with that money. It makes it so much easier then to make money. And then the faster you can get in and out 
And again, if you're out by the morning, you don't have to worry about the wiggles and jiggles of other things that go on later in the day. Like for example, FOMC announcements, if you're trading till two o'clock. But anyways, gaps are an event. They create a sense of urgency. The sense of urgency and a short is what? It's panic, 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 panic. So anyways, it, the event is what is happening. And there, therefore an action is being forced by participants of the stock. People are forced to make a decision because the event is occurring, okay? This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. It's incredibly powerful. And trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power. You know, I would say in general, okay, retail traders may, may be able to enter a stock and temporarily move a stock for a short period of time, but they're not gonna be able to take hold of it the way an institution will and drive the price up or drive the price down in one direction or another, strong, big. And again, I'm saying big, that means volume, that means big, 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 big moves, okay? Here's another great example. This was Meta. We did this a bunch of times, actually. We've, we've been day trading this. We've been doing uh, puts in this as options. Stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here, this was back at the end of October. Opened down here on the 27th and gap down. It's been selling off ever since, okay? This was a really nice short move. It was a move to the downside. How did the stock price get up here at 130 and then be down here the next day under 100? Well, this was earnings for one thing, but really what happened is institutional money sold Meta. They sold it, boom, sold it, sold their positions in it. And again, you can look at why or whatever, or whatever you wanna go over, but anyways, the stock price moved down, okay? So in that case, again, you would wanna look at doing something that would be a short or a put. Here's another example. Well, we sort of talked about this, but this was the rally up here that we saw on the Fed and then the gap taking hold of the live day when it sold off like a hot cake. Just a, just a beautiful move, just a beautiful move down. And again, this was on November, 20, uh, November 2nd, that was Wednesday. Any questions here so far? Um, well, yeah, I don't have, there's no, I don't have any indicators on this charts. So I'm not making trading decisions based on any indicators, whoever is asking that. I'm making trading decisions based on the gap, okay? If you find indicators helpful, that's fine. But I'm not, that's not making the decision for me. The gap is, okay? So anyways, uh go ahead. I was going to say, we do have a question off of Utah, uh, YouTube. Gosh, dang it. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Zola wants to know, how do we find the gaps for new traders? You can find gaps anywhere. In fact, Jeff, I'm sure that you have, you have some kind of scanner, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. That's an easy scan to yeah. find in Metastock, for sure. Jeff can help any, any of you guys and gals with that. Uh, finding them is not hard. That is actually very easy. And Jeff can go over that with you when we're done, how to find them. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of stocks that gap it every day. The niche that I have and what you'd come to me if you wanted to learn is how to pick the one that's going to work in the direction that it's gapping. Because for example, you cannot short every gap down. You cannot go long every gap up. You can't short every gap up and you can't go long every gap down. That's very important. But finding them to rate them is something that Jeff can help you with because there's thousands, thousands and thousands every single day. But it's about pinpointing the best one. And that is what you'd come and learn from me. The rating system itself tells me that Apple's the best one to do today. And Apple's gonna work in the direction of the gap. In other words, Apple's gapping down and it's gonna fall. Apple could have very well gapped down and rallied. We saw the market, it was on October 28th. The market gapped down and rallied, okay, on that day. In the QQQs and the SPY, it was October 28th. That gap down flipped. So there's easy ways to find gaps. Again, uh, you know, Jeff can help you with that. It's the idea of trying to pinpoint the best one to do and get the direction of it right, okay? But finding them is something Jeff can help you with with his 
his thing. Um, I'm very aggressive when I train, so I use the one minute. So all of these, all of these you've seen looking at here were the one minute chart. Remember, I'm in and out quick, but I'm analyzing the large time frame, which is the daily chart, to make the trend decision on directional bias for the gap. And again, you can't short every down gap. You can't go long every down gap. You can't go long every up gap. You can't short every up gap. If it was that easy, then the reality is that nobody would ever lose. You know, there would be no thought process behind it. So it is the whole idea where we're trying to analyze it. And all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And we're looking at the daily, like I said, and then I trade on the one minute. Now let's just take a look here at some options. This was this is the options newsletter. This is a newsletter service that I offer. The trades are emailed to you. This was sent on Friday, October 7th. This was the 360 spy puts. It expired on the 14th. Okay. So let's actually go look at the 360s. Wait, what day was that? The 7th. Here. So market closed here, gap down, rallied, dropped. Take it over, see where we were, around 371 and change. So I called the 360 puts, it expired the 14th. Boom, got the drop. Actually, here's the gap that I was talking to you about here, which flipped. So this close here, gap down, this is a gap down that rallied. Anyways, this was a good call though. You see where we fell into it. And you could have held this for longer. Cost was $5, number of contracts was 15, risk was 7,500, sold at 11. Profit was $9,000. Return on investment, 120%. Cost for the beginner trader, risk was $5. Two contracts, risk was $1,000. Sold $11. Profit, $1,200. So again, you can take one contract. One, you could have paid $500 for it. Two, you could have paid $1,000. And still had a return on investment of 120%. You could have made more. Again, I did not hold this all the way down because I'm looking to get in and out, but I just want to show you where this went. Take it over. This actually went all the way down in here, broke 350 within the period. So that was a nice call. That was the SPY. Let's look at another one here. This was Apple, and I had called this last week. Actually, you could still be in this, but <coughs> this was a nice trade. You could still be in this trade, actually, which is crazy. Uh, I called the Apple 142 strikes, expires this Friday, the puts, Cost was 350, 20 contracts, risk was 7,000, sold at eight, profit was 9,000, return on investment 129%. Again, three contracts was 1,050, sold at eight, 1,350. This is taking the trade and getting out into the move, but you could still be in this because it really doesn't expire till Friday. Not that you should hold it till Friday, but, uh, but we could fall off again this week. So again, I called this here on the 3rd, I think it was. Yeah, November 3rd, 7.40 a.m. Called it, closed here, gap down, got the drop, boom. But you could still be in this trade. This trade is still through the strike. For a beginner trader, for a beginner trader, you can open up an options account with $2,000. For a beginner trader, for a day trade account, you can open up a prop account. You should have at least a minimum of 5,000 with a 10 to one margin. Retail accounts are gonna need 25,000. Uh, to trade on four to one margin. And if you wanna do options and open up a starter account, which is a cash account with $2,000, then I would set your risk accordingly, be in one trade at a time and set your risk within those parameters. So, you know, if I call three options trains on one particular day, for example, with the market, then you're only gonna do one or two. You have to be careful if you have a small account. That's the difference. But it's all about having a trained eye you're looking, you're focused. Like, I'm very focused. I pretty much decided I was doing Apple when I rolled out of bed. I saw it, I loved it, I rated it, but I didn't see anything else I liked better. And actually got a little bit, it was better earlier, actually when I got up early, but I still liked it. It was still like a gap in the open. And it set up and we did it and we we're out. But anyways, you know, when you do something, do something, do something, do something. I've been trading gas for 14 years. I taught myself my own system. I teach the class once a month, which trains my eye every single month. I teach it on top of doing it every day. And I've had the business for 10 years. My eye is, I, I could do this in my sleep, okay? 
The problem with traders is they are jump around so much and they never get good at anything and they never train their eye to, to, to do something. And actually, if we have time here at the end, I, I, I don't know if we're going to go over. If we have time at the end, I'll tell you something I saw the day in the market, which I didn't even think about. It's just my eye just saw it when I was running the room this morning. Again, traders never allow themselves this benefit of training their eye. And you're, you're training your brain. That's what you're doing. You're training your brain to see something before it happens because you're looking at it a certain way. But you have to learn what to look at. And that's the advantage of coming to me and taking a class. But traders will do futures and Bitcoin and they will do stocks and they will do a million different things and a million different strategies and they'll have a million different ind indicators and Fibonacci's and they will never train their eye and their brain to stick on one thing. And that's all that I do. And even though I do options, I'm doing them based on the gap. So it's really the same thing. It's the same exact thing. Doing a spy put, or spy short, it's the same thing, okay? But being successful in the market takes detail and a certain level of precision. Detail matters. It can make a difference in making you a lot of money. It can make a difference in winning or losing. It can make a difference of having a huge week or a huge month, okay? It's about quality, quality and accuracy. And again, you still have to have correct size, proper exit, good risk to reward. These are all basic things that everybody knows. Discipline, all the stuff that you hear probably and that you will hear from everyone all week. Those are, those are givens. That's the ABCs. Risk the same amount in every trade, use stops, you know, don't blow up your account in one day. All these things are the ABCs. But it's about narrowing it down on the precision and the detail because you really don't have to trade all day. And without a good strategy, you're never going to make any money with the market. And I think that's where people get frustrated too when they do jump around. But you've got to stick with one thing. And that's where you have to have the focus. So how much money do you need to do this? Again, margin or buying power is something that comes from the broker. So you can open up a prop account with 5,000 or less at some places. A retail account, you're gonna need 25,000 for margin. You can trade options with a cash account anywhere that allow you to trade options. You, can, you buy puts, we're buying puts and selling them and buying calls and selling them, okay? If you want to take my class, you can sign up for the class, learn it, learn the system. Then you open up a trading account, and again, if you want software, scanners, or any of that, you can talk to Jeff about that. You must have charts. You must have live charts. It's easy to find the scanners to see them because, again, like I said, there's thousands and thousands of things on any given day that are gapping. It's the idea of focusing on the right one to do, to know that you're going to be able to do this one and that it's going to work, okay? And again, it's the idea of booking money. You book it, you chunk it out and book it. You take the trade, get out, book it. We're not long-term investing here. I'm getting the move and the drop if I'm shorting. I'm getting a rally, I get the rally up and I'm out, boom, if I'm long. That's it, okay? But if you wanna do this for something on the side, it's a convenient way to make money because you can trade from home. And even if you're at the office, you can do it, um, many people have it on the app where they can actually place trades on the app. You know, and it's just so convenient now to trade in this electronic world. But um, it's getting the good trades, the risk to reward trades that you need, and then thinking about again, like I said, what your what your lifelong goals are. You know, if if you really, really want to do this for seriously, then you need to take it seriously because life's just getting more and more expensive. I mean, with inflation and the things that today's, like I just said, mortgage rates could be over eight percent by the end of the year. We have to continue to survive and exist, and we want to exist in, in harmony. We don't want to feel like we are skimping and saving and skimping all the time. That's not the way that it's supposed to be. Do I think that eventually prices will go back down? Not necessarily. I think this is a different type of inflation that we've had in the past, and I think that we're in a different world now since COVID. So we, we have to find a way to make things work, and we want to live happy lives, and we don't want to worry about money. And I see, I've seen far too many people worry about money. And, and, I, and, and you know, I'm doing my best to help people and teach people, but I do charge for my information and for my time. But you've got to take it seriously if you want to trade. You must, or you're not going to do well. Learning how to trade before risking your money is so important. It's an important factor in becoming a successful trader. You've, you've got to understand that. But you can empower yourself to trade. You can do it. People are having a very good year with me. 
it's been one of these years, like I said, where shorting was the right way to go. We were short lots of times the market this year. We've been short many, many stocks. I do prefer to short in general, but it, you know, I think that this year has been very advantageous to short. And even though a lot of people think that we're gonna hold here, that we're gonna hold the October 13th lows and everything else like that, I, I disagree. I disagree. So we could be in for a, a very wild and volatile end of 2022 and then eke out a couple of days between Christmas and New Year, maybe for a, a rally into a Christmas rally into the very, very end of the year or something. Like people talk about a Christmas rally. It may be two days. It may be three days. I don't, it's not going to be the whole month of, of December. That's for darn sure. You know, so you have to keep that in mind and think about it. Here's some testimonials from people. Anyways, I did say this before, but nothing in life that is great comes without taking risk. And I think that's important. So if you'd like to learn my system, it's a 26 point checklist. And the key to the system is the 26 points. This is how I'm able to predict the moves the stock bank so accurately, including the market. It's a rating system. I get up in the morning, I rate the gap. I rate the gap, I do this every morning, I never skip it, okay? It's very important. The better I am at getting the rating right, the faster I'm done, the more money I make on the live day. So the Golden Gap Rating System is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. Again, the checklist tells me where it's going to go. So the class I teach is once a month. I only have one more class between now and the end of the year. It's in December. It is a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. It is December 10th and 11th. Now, the class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is $69.99, and it's 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time, two full days. It's always on a Saturday, and it's always on a Sunday. If you'd like to sign up, you can email me at melissa at .com. Now, I am doing holiday specials. So I did a Black Friday sneak peek just this weekend for my marketing list. So I'm, I'm offering that for this webinar. If you think you want to join, you can sign up for the Black Friday sneak peek now if you want to start trading and start joining before the class in December. So I'm doing two specials. One is for the options. If you sign up for the Gap Options newsletter annual subscription, the Black Friday sale is a normal price is $69.99 for 12 months. The Black Friday sale is $59.99. You get it until the end of 2023. So actually, you would get one bonus month. So you would get 12 months plus till the end of 2023, and you would also save $1,000. I'm also offering the Gap Options course free with this Black Friday special. So this is $59.99. You get on the newsletter all the options newsletter trades at the end of 2023. You get the Gap Options course free, that's in December, and you would save $1,000. Can you use a system with futures? Well, again, you know, why, why would somebody choose to trade futures over options in the market or, or day trading? It's, you know, I think futures are just a cheaper way of trading the market. I don't think there's any advantage to trading futures over, over doing trades on margin or options just because of the fact that I think people do it because it's cheaper. So you can use my system to rate the market gaps, and that'll tell you the direction it's going to be to take a futures trade. But I think most people trade the futures because of the type of accounts you could open with futures where people find that to be less expensive. But it's really not any more advantageous in, in, in my opinion. But yes, you can rate the gap in the market, and that would tell you where the, where the market's going to go, which will help you trade the futures but I don't do that, okay? Now, the Golden Gap course class, Black Friday special I'm doing is a Golden Gap course tuition. It's the combo, which is $74.99. You get the Golden Gap course, which is normally $69.99, plus the Trends course. Both these classes are in December. And if you sign up for the Golden Gap course combo, Black Friday special, you receive the live trading room free for one year and the Gap Options newsletter free for one year. This is huge. You basically get the room free for a year, the newsletter free for a year, the two classes, and it's $74.99. So again, you have time. This is the Black Friday special, but if you want to get in and start trading this week, then you could sign up for this. I'm doing the sneak peek and start trading in the live room this week and start getting the options trades this week. You know, when you're thinking about things you want to spend your money on between now and the end of the year, spending money on yourself for education for trading if this is something you really want to do you have to go into it and you have to say i'm worth it 
This is something that's an investment in my future and it's an investment in yourself just like you go to any other school. I'm, I'm actually moving, I'm moving in less than two weeks, so I'm super duper busy, but I've been working on finding an apartment, a, a different apartment in New York, I'm trying to look for a long, long time. It's, it's an investment, you know, and like it's an investment to move. You have to pay for movers, you have to pay for this, you have to pay for that. There's so many things in expense, but it's an investment in myself because I'm looking to improve my life. So, I mean, anything that you are looking to do to improve your life, whether it's get a new job or learn something new or go to school or, you know, buy a house, all of these things cost money. It's just the way the world is. But, you know, they pay off in the end. It's about having an optimistic attitude and believing in yourself. And, I, and as I said earlier, hard work is part of it, but just working hard is not enough. Because there's too many people out there when you're trading the market on any given day that are against you in your positions and they want your money. When you're trading, it's a zero sum game. There's always one winner and there's always one loser. And if you wanna be on the winning side, then you have to believe in yourself. You have to put all the odds that you can stack in your favor, every single one. That means having money to trade, that means believing in yourself, that means following a good mentor that knows what they're doing, which would be me, for example, in the live room. It means having a strategy and rules that you follow every day. It means staying within your risk parameters. It means everything, you know? It's, it sounds great to make all this money, and yes, it is possible, but I think too many people think, ah, oh, it's just, I'm just gonna do it, and, and it, I'm gonna learn it like in a day, and, and take a cheap class, and then, and then I'm gonna make you know $100,000 in a month. It's not like that. While there were some people that made a lot of money on those Reddit stocks that happened, like we're talking now 18 months ago now, so long ago, those things are one in a million. It's like winning the lottery, like the, like the, the Powerball, like the, what's a Powerball? Is a Powerball over 2 billion yet? It's getting close. Like the Powerball that's coming up, I guess it's Tuesday night or Wednesday night, the next Powerball, because it didn't hit. It's some crazy number. Like, yeah, you have to think realistically about this. And once you start to really think realistically, then you can actually make all of your big dreams come true. It, but it's getting it down, the nuts and bolts of it, to understand really what's involved and the commitment of it. And part of the commitment is financial. Any questions here from anybody? Anyways, we had a question on the date from YouTube, but I, I oh. typed it in when you said what it was. So, but uh, uh, Zola wanted to know the date of your next course. So. December 10th and 11th. Awesome. Okay, that was all the questions we had. So think about 2023. It can be your best year yet. It's a good time, it's the holidays, to start getting organized. Again, if you did not have a good year this year, do not beat yourself up about it. There were a lot of traders that didn't have a good year this year because they never expected the market to do these things, inflation, the Fed, interest rates, all of it. You can turn your year around even with two more months left. You can. And the sooner you get in a positive good footing with your training, the better off you're going to be. The sooner that you'll, you'll re be able to realize your dreams and all the things that you want to happen. Any last minute questions from anybody here? I have a special request for you, Melissa. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Will you uh, will you help me pick the next the next prize winner? I oh, um, sure. I need a number between one and nine thousand four hundred and nineteen. Twenty nine. Woo, that's a low number. Um, I'm glad I found the easy way to get around this spreadsheet. Krishna K is the winner of the next prize. Congratulations to Krishna. Cool. Um, and hopefully he's in the U.S. because uh, Trader Tax Accounting, if he is, is going to do his taxes for him. It's a value of 750 bucks. Wow. Congratulations. That's so nice to give out uh, prizes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Thanks so much for having so me, Jeff. It, it's so good to have you. So Melissa at the stockswoosh.com to get yep. signed up for that class. Thank uh, you so much. Love having you, Melissa. Thank you for coming in. Thanks. Thanks.